This never works. I don't know why, but the music never works on stream. <laughs> like really it, it comes in and out, in and out. It's like uh, I don't know. I, who knows? Who knows? What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the DMVR Nugget pregame show. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Let's go. say Rodi. This is how you say it. This is basically Merry Christmas in uh, Serbia today, uh, the holy day, the real Christmas, Orthodox Christmas, a.k.a. Serbian Christmas. And we're here to celebrate it with all of you Denver Nuggets fans across the globe. We're presented as always by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. I've got joined with me superstar Dev in the bright red. So the thing is, like, it's a real party out here, and I've been, like, living life crazy. Uh, sweater up top, who knows what's down low? That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Your manscape boxers. I'm at home. I can do whatever I want to at my God home. Damn it. <laughs> Celebrating his one year anniversary of storming the Capitol. I got D Line Co. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is actually my one year anniversary of receiving this hat as a present from my business partner and only friend on Earth, Blaze. Um, you guys clowned me for it during the uh, <laughs> during the quarantine, and I brought it back up. You know why? I don't respect any of your opinions, especially you, vote. <laughs> <laughs> And then over here, so, dressed as Betty White, it's Brennan Vogt. <laughs> He's the one who said it. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, you laughed a little old, too hard. <laughs> an old vintage Tommy Bahama shirt that I ripped. Some might say for the better. Michelle got me the same shirt for Christmas. So I got two, baby. I got two. You were the Hell guy yeah. that was opening up the same present. This is the guy opening up the same shirt. That's incredible. And, and, that and I was stoked. Pull him up. And I was Find stoked. Guy. Were you generally happy? Were you fake and happy? Oh no! I was thrilled. I was. You know how I feel about my oversized quarter sleeves, bro. Big thing. <laughs> so we got a lot on the docket today. The Nuggets uh, taking on the Sacramento Kings. Unfortunately, Michael Malone ducking the Sacramento Kings tonight. He is not uh, back. We'll have an update scared? here in just a second. Uh, <laughs> Tweet it, it Eric. Serbian. Tweet it. I will. I absolutely it's, will. It's Serbian Christmas. Um, so we are today uh, going to talk about. Weather tonight could be a. Uh, I'm going to make a strong case, you guys. I'm telling. I'm going to convince everybody in the congregation tonight. A strong case of why tonight is going to be this year's turning point. This is the turning point on the season, guys. Things pointing up. I hope. Knock on wood. Fingers crossed. Uh, we're going to talk about Jokic's statue. We just saw Dirk's statue. I wanted to talk about this. What would it look like when the Nuggets build a statue for Jokic in front of Ball Arena, or maybe just somewhere downtown Denver? Um, we'll talk about that. And then, of course, our best bets. But first, some game notes. Vote, you were on the call with Michael Malone earlier today. What uh, What did he have to say? I'm sorry, Pope Popeye Jones. Popeye I was going to say, I was not on the call with Michael Malone today. I was, uh, me and Michael Malone were on a call together. Again, oh, talking about Popeye, you guys. As Popeye Jones said, uh, the Nuggets are still waiting for their lead singer, who should be back soon, but he didn't put a date on it. Four coaches are back today, fellas, including defensive coordinator Jordy Fernandez, uh, who we learned is not the best defensive coordinator that Popeye Jones has worked with, um, <laughs> as he decided to take that answer in that direction. Um, he didn't mean it we, that oh, way. Just to clarify, because you didn't clarify you, there. You. He just had a funny way of delivering a line. As, as Popeye is known to do, like, I'm telling you, we take for granted how hard it is to speak to the media off the cuff. Because when you for get sure. a guy who has never done it, as Popeye Jones clearly has never done, like, sometimes he'll say things when you transcribe them. You're like, wait. Is he insulting Jordy Fernandez? No, he's not. He just it, he no, said a he took the opportunity that to. That's right. He wanted to shout a colleague and then ended up having to walk it back. Look, it's not that easy, especially when you got clowns like me making fun of you on the internet. We also learned that Aaron Gordon was sick in that relate. loss to you to Utah, and both he and Bones Highland uh, were sent home yesterday with a non-COVID related illness. They did test negative, so there's no concern there. They're both expected to go tonight, fellas. Again, uh, again, uh, there is concern. Yeah. Well, the that they're that sick. Up, the fact that it was brought up is a uh, concern. Like, right? You don't bring it up unless it's a concern. Then you also have to go uh, more about it and say that it's non-COVID because that's just the state that we live in. There's concern, but there is concern. They're, they're, they could be a little tired today. They could be not fully healthy. I'm just saying. Like, look, I I currently have COVID. I in game shape, hosting the show. <laughs> Another guy can have a sickness way worse, way more concerned about the other person with dengue fever or whatever it is. Okay, you guys got me. They're not concerned about COVID because they tested negative, but they are Thank sick, you. so that's something to watch. Jeff Green and Zeke Naji still questionable. Popeye told us. I haven't seen if that's changed since. 
Um, they're out, of course, coming out of health and safety protocols. Uh, and then, listen, Popeye acknowledged what the rest of us are thinking, talking, joking about tonight. It's the Sacramento Kings. They swept the Nuggets last year in the regular season. Popeye right. it, it, it said this is something the team was talking about today before the game. So it's on their minds as well. Uh, hopefully revenge is in the air. And the Nuggets got their work cut out for them tonight. One more game note, and this is the best one. Hope everyone's ready. No Rashawn Holmes tonight. He's out, baby. Yes. Oh, let's, go. Oh. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, no, a chance. So, I was looking at that minus eight line, and I was like, there's no way that the Nuggets are favored by eight. But when now that you say that Rashawn Holmes is not right. in, I'm I'm con- I'm comfortable. I'm I'm in a good mood. That guy is a Nuggets destroyer, and he's on the first team, all Nuggets destroyer. And it's instead, true. instead they have uh, – they've got Marvin Bagley, who's been playing minutes. And he's, like, athletic. He's interested. He presents a challenge on one end of the floor. But you got to tell me he's going to guard Nikola Jokic? I'm sorry. That That is barbecue chicken. I, I should be barbecue chicken. Jokic needs to take over. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. Yeah, that put that push shot was the low light of last season. And last season included losing Jamal Murray, uh being <laughs> bounced out of the playoffs by, by getting swept, Suns and Four guy. That push shot will haunt me for the rest of my life. So I'm so glad that's not uh, we're not going through that tonight. Not all joking aside, Rashawn Holmes might be the single worst like nuggets killer in Dude. terms in terms of like guy that plays above what you expect. Every time he plays the Nuggets, mm. like he's got like what? five great games under his belt against the Nuggets. Dude, what? Who, who's the? I can't even remember his name now. That little guard that cooked us. Ish Smith. Ish Ish Smith. Smith. He's yeah. up there as well. Ish oh Smith. my Those god, Ish Smith. Two. Yo, Ish Smith did it again this season. I know. I know. We all know. We. <laughs> yeah, we were there. Ish Smith, Rashawn Holmes, pick and roll would score every time against the Nuggets. It would be absolutely insane. Um, so. You, you missed a, another great anecdote here, Vote. I don't know if you didn't write this one down, but um, Popeye Jones, almost <laughs> apropos of nothing, said, I am I love bass fishing, so if anyone knows any good watering holes, let me know. A That's a real bass. comment. That was a real comment. I don't know how, no. it, how it, we arrived there. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't find it as noteworthy as you, but I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm glad mm-hmm. you mentioned it. Now they know. And then, of course, know? Monte Morris will be back in the starting lineup. That's what were you right. going to say, Eric? You uh, you have the hat of a bass fisherman? I was going to say, Dev, do you know any of any bass holes? Um, no. Actually, the only bass I know is Brandon Bass. He used to play with the Celtics. That's okay. right. He's a pretty okay player. There's Lance Bass. Isn't there a Lance Bass, too? Lance Bass. Yeah, That's famously. in sync. Yeah. Isn't Look that? at you, a man of culture. <laughs> I'm well, you know, culture. Oh, we, we got the wrong Lance Bass. <laughs> Um, so honestly, tonight's game really Denver, I think should win. Like they need to win. And there's some good players on the other end of that court. I mean, Tyrus Halliburton, De'Aaron Fox, De'Aaron Fox, also a Nuggets killer just with his speed. You know, Denver's had a hard time with that. Uh, you, you think about Harrison Barnes, a very good one-on-one score. And then you go to the bench, Davion Mitchell, one of my favorite rookies, uh, in this class. Fox is going to have his hands full. Davion Mitchell is like a bigger, stronger Faku. And, like, he just plays 100 miles per hour at all times, and he's an insane defender. So that'll be an interesting matchup. But um, having Monte Morris back in the starting lineup, I feel, Dev, is, like, a pretty big deal for the Nuggets. Yeah, and and he came back from his injury um, or just basically having timeout, not really injury. Um, he came back on the right foot. He's knocking down shots. Um, the offense seems to be flowing. So, like, they're trying to score um, in different ways. And also, he's just a reliable option that the team um, has, especially offensively. Um, It just seems to be a different unit, and they seem to flow um, with him in that starting unit. It also pushes guys like Faku in the second unit where they're way more comfortable um, and where they've been playing for the entire year. So having a guy like Monte back, it just brings a a surge of confidence for that starting unit as well as the second unit of getting back to the flow. Speaking of the starting unit, it just came out, and it is the old starting unit. So you got Monte Morris and Will Barton in your backcourt. I love it. Will Barton slides back to being a shooting guard, which is his best position. And then you go with Jeff Green and Aaron Gordon as your two forwards. Another yes. great – I mean, I love that pairing. Um, super into that hat. Oh, right, this is why Steph is so great and the rest of you here are just so terrible. She tuned in late. Now she, she doesn't realize <laughs> Obviously, Jokic at center. I do think, like, this is a lineup that has a plus eight net rating on the season and, like, a 121 offensive rating. They've been very good. I'm excited for them to be back on the court today. That brings us to our top story tonight, guys, for the pregame show. What? 
Serb Orthodox Christmas is today. <laughs> we know this has been a, a, on a holiday of ours uh, and a holiday for the Nuggets. And also, by the way, a real holiday for all people who celebrate <laughs> Orthodox Christmas, Orthodox Christians. So today, if you don't know, is Christmas in Serbia. Jokic, we know, actually does celebrate Christmas this day. We've been told before in the past. So Christmas Day game, December 25th. He doesn't really care. Uh, so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you're so much more distracting on StreamYard than when you're like to my side. Uh -huh. I just have to not leave. The, the yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. Deal with like, it. What? Deal with what? it. <laughs> um, but so I actually think that this can be a big turning point game. One, I, ex I, I expect Jokic should have a big game tonight. One, because he has a big game all the time. But tonight right. is a special night. But here's the other reasons I think tonight is a line of demarcation. D-line, tell me if you agree. Serbia, it's Orthodox Christmas. Mm-hmm. The Nuggets are at home playing a shorthanded team. They mm -hmm. just got back. They're fully healthy roster. I know it's not really because Jamal Murray, but relatively speaking, like for guys they should be expecting, they just got it back. And they are coming up on a string of games. Uh, they have a, a couple road games, and then they have a six-game homestand. I honestly believe this is the moment where Denver can start to get a roll. Things can start to feel normal. They're not going to be traveling very much. I was thinking about this the other day, Eric. Jokic has a daughter now that is three months old. When they have their six-game homestand, that will be the most he has ever been home with her in her life. I think this is a big, a big moment for the Nuggets where they go on a run. What do you think? Uh, well, I think the the first and most important part is it's the game after playing poorly and losing, which means that they're going okay. to win this game because that's the way that the Nuggets are working this year. But you're right. I mean, like getting bodies back and actually being able to establish rhythm. Rhythm has been what's been missed. Rhythm is the thing that is so sorely lacking like me in this hat right Dev? Me, <laughs> I just can't they can't pull it together like they can't get any role going and you know every night is a new night every night is a new lineup guys don't know how to play with one another like um and monte coming back like you know a couple games ago what do they have 24 turnovers like it's just it, it's just been so unbelievably unpredictable and so just having some like semblance of normality. Hopefully, I mean, I mean, I don't even know what normal is for this current Nuggets squad. Um, I know like the idea of being able to just rely on players that you know who they are and know their names is an important thing. Uh, so that in and of itself, I think you could be right, Adam. I think you're onto something. I'm buying into this theory. Let's go. Dev, what do you think? I just feel like uh, Nikola Jokic has destroyed, like actually been dominant. Um, especially as of late with like stats and things like that. So for us to get a game that Jokic actually cares about, who knows like, you know, what type of game that is. And also like they just have been, you know, coming up with losses that they, they really can't, you know, explain. Um, and, and as Eric has been saying for a while now, they play every other game like really well. So this is a bounce back spot for them against a team that, they really do have their number. Like the Kings, they have to be bulletin uh, board material where they're just saying, this is a team that gets you every single time. At what point are you going to come back and bounce back? It's kind of funny that they're playing the Kings without Michael Malone, and we already know the history there with him being a former coach there. This might be the game that they actually play serious, and they're not going to have the guy that cares about it more than everyone else. But right. um, this has to be one that they circle every single time that says, hey, the Kings have beat you, you know, the last few times, and they've actually altered your season. When are you going to uh, fight back? So big game for Nikola Jokic, big game for the Nuggets, but a game that I think that they have had circled. And it looks like an update here as we're scrolling the timeline. It looks like the wrong green was listed as a starter. It's actually Jamichael Green. Um, Jeff Green coming back, I was I was surprised if he was going to start on right. his first game back. But nonetheless, um, don't necessarily love J. Mike starting. But I'll be honest, I like this starting lineup way more than the Faku Rivers starting lineup. So even with that that change. Vote, what do you think about this as a, uh, you know, a, a moment <clears throat> where we look back and we say there was the turning point? Things are certainly lined up, right, or close to aligning. I think the biggest thing is it's contingent upon what everyone around the league is dealing with right now. And we know we've talked so much about like you know three of the big heads of, of the Hydra being cut off for Denver, but it's the chops at the knees, right? And so if they can avoid going into flux during this stretch, so everyone who takes the floor knows who they're taking the floor with, knows what they're trying to do alongside that person. Team sport, team concepts, and I know sometimes it's all about 
who your superstars are and all that. But we talk so much about how Denver doesn't look up to par on either end of the floor. It's because you have guys who don't know who they're playing with night to night. So I think you're right, Adam, but things things got to hold together now uh, with, with what full strength they have left. Eric, is there something you want to add? Um, F you, Dev. And um, the one thing that I'll say that I think that you're really more uh, right about than anything is that uh, this team, as we may or may not know, uh, goes as, as Nikola Jokic goes. And him feeling some sort of like happiness and contentedness and actually wanting to, you know, or like not feeling the weight of, you know, being on the road and doing something he maybe doesn't want to do. Uh, I think is going to go a really long way with the squad. Like, I mean, I was thinking about it the other night, like he had an unbelievably monster game last game, but like we're, I, we're in store. Like when are we going to get that Jokic 50 piece? Like the game where he just comes out and he's like, I'm scoring. Like, I'm just going to score. Like, it's not about the triple double. It's not about the rebounds. The rebounds will come, but where he just comes out and he just takes control. And, you know, like other superstars just, like LeBron or somebody would put the team on their back from a scoring standpoint. Like I'm just hoping he kind of switches into that mode. And I think probably a lot of it just has to do with how he's feeling. Like you know, yeah. we've, been, we've spent enough time like playing pop psychologist with, with Jokic. There's, there's something to it. I think if Jokic gave you 50 points and a win tonight, uh, it would be the best Christmas present since uh, this hat from blaze. Let's go. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. I guess it's going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> could be worse. Definitely could be better. Um, I, I'm excited for tonight. By the way, the Kings have had the opposite schedule of the Nuggets. They've played, I think, like 13 of their last 15 games at home, and they're now venturing out on the road for, for the first time. So they are a little bit different than Denver in that they they might be a little bit road shocked, you know, if they head out right here. So it'll be interesting to see. Also, this is my favorite comment of the night. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my scooter should have 18 wheels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's incredible. I it looks like <laughs> scooter should have 18 wheels. I love it. Um, so, all right, guys, let's move on uh, to our next topic here, which is we all saw Dirk Nowitzki. His jersey was retired. They had the ceremony. Dirk's the best, man. I got to say, like, Personality-wise, I honestly believe Jokic is more similar to Dirk than any other star I've ever seen in this league, certainly through this era, in that Dirk does not take himself very seriously. He's really funny. He's a bit awkward. And uh, he's just, like, so lovable. And it was great for me. Like, I'm an NBA fan. It was great for me to watch this whole ceremony, this whole process. Obviously, Jokic was asked. But he gets an award. Kale, do you have the Dirk Nowitzki statue? Uh, they made a little mini one. You can pull that up. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> It's okay. It's not the best. It's There's not... one distracting part. There's a little distracting part in that it does look a little bit like anal beads, but it, you know what? It's not bad. It's not <laughs> just the worst. A little, it's just a little more than you'd like. Just a little bit there. Yeah, you got it. Um, it is the Dirk Fallaway, which is, of course, his iconic shot. Fellas, when they build a statue of Nikola Jokic 20 years from now, what is that statue going to look like, Dev? So you you giving it to me first, like there's just one definitive answer. So like That's why I, I give it to you first. I love the fact that it's there. It's the somber. It's the somber shuffle. Like that's his shot. That's um the one that you know that redefined who he is as a person. Um like I feel like that's the gimme answer. Me personally, I would go with like a no look pass or something like that, just to show that he changed um the way that the game has been played. I really think that he's a uh, revolutionary type of player where he you know he's he's been he's been passing right now his evolution is like scoring and also rebounding but he's the best plat passer in the NBA I really, truly do feel like that so for you to have a seven foot statue with the guy that's you know doing a no look pass I think that that would be even better than, than the guy doing some of the shuffle which we haven't even seen much of this <laughs> Like, it would be pretty funny if he just never does the Sambor Shuffle again. Or he never makes it again. And then we're like, do the Sambor Shuffle statue from back in 2003. <laughs> like Radiohead having to perform Creep. They're like, we're tired. Yeah. We're not doing it anymore. We're not we did like 12 more anymore. albums after that one. Are you really <laughs> sure? Like, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, vote. Is there any other answer? Or, yeah. and, or would Wait, you come to me. Let, me. let me steal his joke. Let me steal his joke. <laughs> what is it? It's the, the 90 yeah. degree. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the, yeah, you're right. That would be a good one. The other the other answer is, is our at DNBA logo, the water polo. 
Yeah, I agree. Oh, that's agree. true. Yeah, it's so true, man. Like that is our logo. Is because it is. Yeah, that one handed. He does it so often. You're or, right. Go ahead. Winding up to hit campaign in the nose. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm I'm super into that. Or just backing down other statues, backing down Rocky with his chest. It's funny, man, because statues usually like make a person look regal. You know what I mean? Because like you could have. You know the iconic him screaming, you know that that one. Yeah. Like, you could have that, um, but that's like angry. You almost want it to be like more composed, or this. That's why I saw more shuffle. It's like, you know, it's just it's something regal about him doing it. Um, what if there's a chance? Actually, I'll ask you this one, uh, vote. What are the odds? Whatever his statue should be like ten years from now, we'll have a more certain idea of what it should be because it's something we haven't even seen yet. That's oh. Oh, wow. That's it. Because it's, um, I mean, it's going to be, maybe it's Jokic and Jamal embracing. Ooh. Oh, man, a joint statue. Holy incredible. smokes. Well, it's like, it's like, if you think of the iconic uh, Dikembe Mutombo, it's him grabbing the ball in celebration. Like, it honestly could be like Jokic wins a championship and he gives this, right. you know, iconic thing. And it's that's like, it. that's the statue yep. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, instead of this, it's this and it's awesome. Yeah. You know? it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you think, Superstar Dev? Is it a chance the statue is something we haven't even seen yet? Absolutely. Um, like, I really do feel like we've seen, you know, some really good Jokic uh, moments, but, like, none stand out as much as the Samba Shuffle. Yeah. Maybe it is a time that everyone, like, embraces and they think of. So, like, right now he's on the path to become, you know, honestly one of the best, you know, centers of all time. So maybe he has a moment that everybody does remember. So, like, maybe a – uh, a game winner in the playoffs where he makes a weird shot or like a hook or something like that, like, or an underhand pass or something for the game winner that we, we try to go on to. So I think there is something to that. It is true. It's like, you know, like the Jordan jumper over Elo and then the, the, the jump or whatever is iconic. It could be like, yeah, like game winner. And he does the iconic little movement of some sort. It's like, that's it. And then every yeah. says for eternity does that movement. The irony in what you just said is that Michael Jordan has a statue and they didn't use that. <laughs> well, he also has yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jordan does. They kind of you have a lot of options. With that. <laughs> you have a lot of options. If I was handicapping this, I would say, because Harrison brought up a good point. He's known for passing, so it should be a pass. Well, there's something there to it. I, I could see it. I would say Sambor Shuffle minus yeah, 100. Yeah. Uh, a one-handed water polo pass plus 250 uh something we haven't even seen yet uh let's say plus dude plus i want to and I then a dunk him. plus 800 oh, oh dude there's no chance it's a dunk i want to see him treated like a uh, general on the back on horseback like the you would oh that would actually be sick george washington like coming in yeah but like he's on the trotter up. he's on the yeah exactly exactly actually actually you want to know the leading minus 200 option <clears throat> no statue Crocky's just like nah we'll, we'll yeah i it. love it That's a that. nice a nice photo on the wall what if it's just like a what if it's just a like a, a big iron cooney honda logo that says <laughs> and it says yoka yoka <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it'll be a sponsored in, statue it'll in honor of nikola Jokic. yeah on the motors Jokic <laughs> You. it's him driving a honda it's like what <laughs> okay uh all right guys uh dev make us some money let's open up the DraftKings sports but can i tell you i got two things for you before you get to this number one there is a profit boost 20 percent if you bet on a first score so let's all do this together i know it's a dumb oh bet it's a God. sucker I bet. This bet i know of course because it's a terrible bet but you know what when you get those kind of odds that little odds boost you got to do it so who do we yeah, think when you score win the it's great who's winning the tip Jokic. Jokic, you don't get yes. great odds with him. I mean, plus four twenty-five. Dev, do you want to put like an irresponsible amount of units on this tonight? Just spice oh. things up. Oh I'm God. not going to do that. Yeah, why? What? <laughs> All right. Sorry for sorry for trying to have fun, guys. <laughs> you know what's more fun? I'll, I'll do Winning it by myself. Money. Winning bets is more fun than losing them. I, I promise you, it is. There's no adrenaline rush in me besides the fact that there's a chance that I could win. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going Jokic. All right. Well, That's why we we'll go with. I really do think that this is a game that they try to get him going very, very early. I think that it's, you know, it's unorthodox Christmas for him to just get started. Um, he also has been passing a lot in these last, you know, few games to get started. So this is a game I feel like they're going to just make sure that they go through him. I'm going to go Jokic. He's going to win the tip. He's going to get the first shot of the game. If yeah. you, you sound so confident, get irresponsible with me. What's the problem? 
Let's do it. Let's do it, Mo. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. The greatest part is that we get to see the like the destruction of your mood like so early on just immediately off right the bat like, <laughs> give himself a chance for the rest of the night that's right. <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. it's not something you're like oh well let's see how the second half plays out like you're just bummed out immediately i love it <laughs> yeah so just taking a look at this line the nuggets are eight point favorites them being eight point favorites against the kings it's a little scary for me. I'm going to be honest. Are you going to they, take the Kings? Are you going to take? The they seem to have their number. The I'm not going to take anything on that. I'm just saying eight points is a whole lot for a Nuggets unit that has not played well as of late. Like I know that the Kings aren't great, but they're good at playing against the Nuggets. So eight points is a is a is a ton. Right. Um, so then we'll we'll go over to the to the um, the the points the over two twenty six and a half. I look at that and I say great pace. When I see 226 and a half, it just takes me over to my um to my lock. It just takes me to the lock. If I see a high score, I just know there's going to be a lot of shots up. If I know that there's a lot of shots up, we're going to go with Jokic rebounds. Of course. <laughs> time. Every time. Dude, I don't think you get tired of it. What do you have it at? It's only 13, 13 and, and a half. half. Yep, 13 and a half. It was at 12 and a half earlier is what's wild. But, yeah, we're going to take that, that 13 and a half. There's just no way he doesn't get it. They're going to be scoring. They don't have an a, a actual center for him. It's also an orthodox Christmas, so I think that he cares. I feel like he's going to have another 2020 game. We're going to lock that in. There's no number too high until they put it on 19 and a half. I just don't think that there's a number that's too high. He's going to get another 2020. So that is going to be my lock of the game. Yep. Yeah, I'm with it. Just because I know that it's – we're going to just say this early just to get it out of the way because I know it's going to piss you off. We're going to just lock in uh, De'Aaron Fox points. We're just going to get that you out of the way. You it's son of a biscuit. And a half. He's going to score that. He's coming off a 230-point uh, games. He's going against Monte Morris. Let's okay. just get it out okay. of the You're going to lock right. that in, but we're just going to get it <laughs> out of the way. Okay, you're right. Okay, it's annoying. Right. Right. You're, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you're absolutely right. That so is One thing that I don't see Jokic doing in this game, they upped the assist – I don't think that this is a Jokic uh, triple double game. Do you guys? Could be. I mean, it's Christmas. <laughs> it is Christmas, but I feel like he's just going to score. We've, we've been talking about the fifty point game and him just going off offensively. Okay. Eight and a half is their point. I mean, their assists like that's wow. high. Nine, that is really high. Nine assists to just set it at. That's because mm. they've been seeing the triple doubles come like every single time. I don't know how much he's going to be involved, like involved in the passing this game, but we've been seeing the triple doubles. Like, maybe well, do you do the Kings triple. double? I mean, it's Alex Len question mark starting. Well, Bagley to start, but yeah, Bagley to start, right? Sure. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe I'll tell you my bet. I, it's funny you don't like this one, Dev, but I took it earlier. Uh, the Kings have been mundered three out of their last five games. They've been mundered. Ooh, I know that number was back in the mundered dome. But I put money, and by the way, I had a profit boost. I don't know if everybody has one, a 25% profit boost. I boosted that bad boy up to like 400, plus 400. I'm on the Munder tonight, guys. I'm Holy on the Munder. Smokes. Yeah, I'm with the it. Munder coming on a 226, <laughs> like you really are believing that this is going to be a big game. Because 226, like that's a high, that's a high like total for the Nuggets. So if you get a Munder in that, you're getting guys, like the, the units that you're getting guys right there, that's huge. Yeah. All right. Dude, like another, another bummer place to look that you might consider looking if you're into bummers but making money is it's fading Monte Morris's pit points. He's got off night on him tonight. What a great note to end the show on. No way. Perfect. Monte Morris. I mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, if you want to make money, like Dev can do this with impunity. Then all of a sudden, I give a very astute note that actually uh, takes a lot of research and consideration into uh, consideration. And what happens? Bones Highland, by the way, is now plus money for one and a half threes. Are we staying away? He's got to make him stay, at some point. Dude, stay I'm away. ready. I am so away. ready to get busy. Are you in the bone zone with me? It's a dumb thing. I, I am living in the bone zone. This is I am vibe so bet. ready to get busy. For three minutes. One and a half threes for Bones. This is a vibes bet. He's going to have Davion Mitchell guarding him. This was a terrible bet. Um, oh, wait. <laughs> Davion Mitchell's going to bu- guard Bones. Off night is guarding Bones. I'm oh, off night is guarding Bones, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, my last one here, guys. I did make a six par- uh, pick parlay. It is at plus four hundred, which isn't bad. Nuggets. I took the spread, Dev. I think. Look, like I said, I'm feeling tonight is a line of demarcation, so I'm going with it. 
25 plus points for Jokic, 11 and a half rebounds for Jokic, three plus assists for Monte. This is the tough one. I think he gets three assists tonight, all to Jokic. Uh, one steal from Jokic that hits every time. And Nuggets to win the first quarter. Like Let's I said, go. Nights of Vibes night. I'm starting the vibes. I hope you guys are feeling it. Christo Cerrone, Merry Christmas. Shout out it, Christ. We're doing it. We'll see everybody right back here with us after the game. Oh, da, da, da.